giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. fun. Uh, Greg, uh, let's jump into that there. Uh, talking about, uh, you know, from a supplier perspective, you know, lots <laughs> changes for you, right? And uh, yep. what that might potentially mean. And I, I'm sure you're probably just as curious as the rest of us. Uh, for something like that. So how does, how do you approach something like this from a supplier's perspective? So, I mean, first of all, I'm going to preface this by saying that we're only a few hours into this, right? Like, like I, I learned about this today too. So, um, but you know, look, first of all, this is unprecedented times, right? We need to make sure that we're being responsible as citizens and all the, everything else that comes with it as a supplier it's it's going to change our forecasting for the year, right? Does it change our decisions about whether we release new products or or not this year? Um, all those things are conversations that are going to happen, um, especially because honestly, like every single year, if we approach a regular season, we know every team is building a new robot, right? So there's this base baseline demand for products that every vendor whether it's us or Andy Mark or Vex or, or, or whoever has their own spot in the market. They understand kind of what it is and there's always give and take there, but it's really comes down to this year. We have no idea how many new robots are going to get built. Yeah. Are you going to, are 75% teams going to take their robot and upgrade it or are everybody going to build something new? And that's going to really change things. I know that um, it's probably the safest bet to say that, Vendors are going to go conservative, um, just like every business around right now is going to go conservative. Um, we will figure out a way to survive. Um, obviously, we, we appreciate all the teams, but ultimately, all the vendors that are very, very first centric are here because we want to support the program and we want to support the teams. And what the, what the teams need and what the program needs right now is a supportive partner. And so we will make adjustments. We'll do what we can, but beyond that, it's kind of a, it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Like, yeah. Well, Greg, Greg, we'll help you out a little bit. We got a poll in chat right now that says, are you going to rebuild or reuse your robot as is right now? And right now reuse is uh, taking about 80% of the votes. So give okay. some, that's some free market research for you right there, man. Yeah. And I think it, one thing to keep in mind in context, like maybe this, this will shine some happiness Greg's way. Like um, everyone's, you know, seen some of the best, you know, individual mechanisms and everyone is used to continuously improving the robots. Um, it's a pretty good compromise for teams, uh, especially teams that are maybe in a more stable position financially or, you know, with, with help, mental help or whatever support. Um, you're definitely going to see teams rebuilding, you know, subsystems of the robot. So you maybe don't get, you know, 100% refresh, but I could totally see, you know, uh, an upgraded shooter, an upgraded intake, you know, ultra planetary and, you know, Neo 550 is pretty baller. People are going to, you know, notice that now and want to, you know, move their intake to it or something like that. So um, I, mean, I, I, I can see that happening. Like it's kind of the one parallel I want to really draw is like it's, with the extra time, it's kind of more like a Vex game in that you see teams, like you've now seen the higher level teams, while well, you've already built your base robot. Before Vex Champs, if I'm if my understanding's correct, there's a lot of upgrading between your first event and your last event at Champs. Like, it's, it's kind of a bigger version of that where teams are going to be able to use part of it. At the same time, First hasn't told us 100% what we're doing, so are you going to, you know, spend your time in the off-season... You have to be careful because what if you spend all your time upgrading the one element of the game that gets changed, right? Like it's a bit of a risk versus reward. I know for us, we've already had a call and there's a lot of catting is kind of our first bet because you don't put any money into catting. So any decisions we kind of make there and it's not like, you know, we can meet right now. So it's kind of like you'll have teams who are really kind of planning out what they're doing. Um, hopefully I want to see some high level robots, obviously, uh, which would be pretty cool. I mean, to me, this is, I think Tavian mentioned it before, like this really is just a, a different uh, challenge. Um, and I know, uh, like, I know for some, some students, it's gonna, this is not like a good decision for them. Like the, it's not a pleasant one, um, especially like maybe the juniors who like were really excited to step up into like maybe a senior leadership role on a team and, and move ahead. But I will absolutely tell you that this is a real life thing. I've had, I've worked on many programs and projects where we had a deadline that we worked really hard to get to, and then the deadline moved out. 
So like the thing was 90% done. And then all of a sudden we had like a huge amount of time and we had to pivot and figure out how to best use that additional time that we were just given that was totally unexpected. Like this is exactly what that is. So um, teams will absolutely overplay the time that, that we have. They'll, you know, they'll rip up too much of the robot. Um, they'll maybe be thinking they, in the fall, we can go back and practice or something and not be able to get to that, that level of stuff. So it's still, um, it, it feels nice to, I think, to have some green, you know, green pasture, blue sky stuff for teams to get back to, to think of. But this is very much a build to your resources, build to the restrictions your team's going to have, use the, the new time that you have wisely. So, um, it, it is a, a totally uh, uh, additional challenge, you know, just like every everything else we yeah. get. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.